to take a centre profile line from the bridge of the nose and back to the coronal. Split the hair in two and find the apex at the top of the head. The apex is found by placing the comb at the highest point of the head and you can place your comb horizontally on the head to find the balance. Once you've got your apex, you'll want to place your finger where the head starts to naturally curve at the back and press down on the comb. Where the comb dips is where you'll start your radial line, which is the line from the coronal and down to the mastoid behind the ear. Repeat this for both sides. Now placing your comb flat against the side of the head, find where the head starts to curve in, press your comb into the dip and take a line from your radial to the temple or recession point. Repeat this for both sides and clip away the top layer. Now moving on to our diagonal back graduation, our comb will dictate our cutting angle, our longest point will be at the top of the comb and the shortest point will be at the bottom. This diagonal cutting line will give us a backwards moving haircut and help the flow of the hair when it comes to styling. Take your first section at the temple no wider than the width of your comb and follow this back with no over direction until you reach the curvature at the back of the head. When taking your sections, remember to saturate the hair with water and use a cutting lotion to make sectioning a dream. Place your comb in and underneath the hair so that we elevate the hair to its natural line. This will give us true length with no over direction and will remove the maximum amount of weight. As we approach the curvature of the back of the head, we're slightly changing our cutting line to match the shape of the head. This round shape is used when we're trying to reduce the amount of weight and create a seamless transition which is perpendicular to the head. Repeat this for both sides before we move on to our back layer. Take a centre profile line at the back of the head, again no wider than the width of your comb. Cut your guide at the occipital bone and follow this shape down towards the shortest point at the bottom of the head. It's important not to go any higher than the occipital bone as we don't want to reduce too much of the shape near the top of the head. As you move left and right of the original cut guide, we're directing each section into our last. You'll find there is only really a small amount of hair to cut, as we've already cut in most of our shape with our diagonal back sections. That's the scissor cut finish for the sides. We're now going to prime the surface and mold our shape with clipper over comb, ready to introduce our low skin fade. Grab your grade two and find where your scissor cut is at its shortest point. This should be just below the parietal ridge. We're keeping lots of weight on the blend as we're using this as our disconnection, which is where our curtains will lay. This acts as a kind of shelf for the curtains to sit as we want the haircut to have some body underneath the shape so that the facial shape doesn't become too elongated. Whip your grade two around the sides and just below the occipital bone and follow it up just underneath with one and a half. Take your clipper comb. I'm using a JRL comb, which roughly resembles a one and a half guard in width. We're gonna find our shortest and longest point and match the two together. Before just whipping the hair off, it's hugely important to think about shape. If we're reducing too much of the bulk here, we've taken it too high. Place your comb in horizontally and find your shortest point at the bottom of the comb. Angle your comb so that the teeth are facing slightly towards you and reduce the bulk. If you have less experience in the clipper of a comb, I would suggest using the clipper comb at an angle. That means turning your comb so it's facing the head vertically and finding your shortest point at the bottom. By having your comb at a vertical angle, you're allowing more hair to show through the teeth, which gives you a much better representation of the shape. Follow this around the head until smooth and then move on to your scissor over comb. For this part, we're taking our thinning shears as opposed to our regular cutting shears. This is so that we keep the shape and just reduce the density. As mentioned earlier, we want to keep some of the weight on the shape. So we use the thinners over comb just to reduce the weight on the corner of the shape. So naturally here, I would move straight onto the low skin fade. But as we do so many skin fades day in, day out, I'm going to assume that we can leave this part of the tutorial for later. Check the highlights in the description to find the fade a bit later on. Layer in the top, we're going to be using the Y and X axes to determine our shape. This is so that we can have nice textured, choppy layers when our curtains lay at the perimeter. We're introducing the shape by following the curvature of the head with a round cutting line. 
using a vertical point cutting technique, follow the shape from the front to the back. For our X axis, our horizontal line, we're introducing a triangular shape. We're using this triangular shape here as we want to retain as much length as we can towards the edges of our shape for maximum drop. The way we cut this over direction is as follows. Cut your initial vertical guide on panel one. You'll then take a section of hair parallel to this, which will be number two, and you'll over direct this hair into panel one. We'll carry this on in the same fashion. For example, one, two into one, three into one, and so on. Repeat this for the left and right side of the head before we move on to breaking up the density with our feather razor. Recline your client back and take vertical sections from front to back, each time isolating the panel that you've just cut as we don't want to over texture. Pull the hair with maximum tension, hold your razor at 90 degrees and use the corner of your blade to slice into the hair shaft. When using the razor, we're aiming for the mid lengths and ends, stay away from the root. Section the sides of the hair and repeat this process for both sides. As we move to the perimeter, we're making sure that the hair is dry, as when cutting dry hair, it's true to length. Again, the comb will dictate our cutting angle. We're staying in line with our triangular cutting line, so place your comb with the ear and angle the front of the comb towards the corner of the lip and the back of the comb toward the crown. This will give a good indication of what the line will look like and provide us with a progressive shape moving forwards. The triangular shape means that the front of the hair will remain the longest, and as we move to the coronal, we're gradually getting shorter. Make sure to use a point cutting technique to keep a nice natural finish on the hair. To style these curtains, we're wetting the hair through, placing a decent amount of your favorite wet look product and using a diffuser to give the hair some body. We're drying the hair to around 85% as we want to leave the hair slightly shinier so that we don't have too much volume. Once the hair is dry, rough it up a little and piece the curtains apart so you can see some natural separation. That's it, 90s Beckham, eat your heart out. We've just recreated this masterpiece from his glory days. You've been a wonderful bunch. If you're still listening to my wonderful voice, then hats off to you. I hope you've got some valuable information from this tutorial. For more like this, check out these two bangers on the screen right now. I'm CMC Barber. Big up your damn self.